Hi everyone! Today I'm sharing a spread in my Life Crafted album that is literally a month in the making. So this spread is about my boyfriend's first homebrew in my place. Um, this isn't the first brew that he's personally made, but it's the first brew that I've seen him make. So it was really exciting for me and I thought I would share all of the steps of the homebrew process um, using pictures that I took during the whole process and um, some stamps from everyday explorers as well as paper person. So right off the bat, I knew that there had to be some sort of fold out or interactive element for me to be able to include all the photos in all of these different steps because there were 12 photos for all 12 of the homebrew steps. So here I'm just working on a trifold that's going to go on the left side of the Life Crafted album spread. And then I'm going to work on a bifold for the right side of the album um, in the later parts of the video. To make this trifold, I have two pieces of white cardstock here. Um, one measures about three and three quarters of an inch by eight and three eighths of an inch. And the other one measures um, a bit larger. So this one is nine and three quarters of an inch by eight and three eighths of an inch. And I'm just scoring on the larger piece on the long side at half an inch, as well as at four and three quarters of an inch. After that, I just applied my 3 8 inch score tape onto that um, half an inch flap there, and that's what I'm going to use to attach the smaller piece to my larger piece to make this trifold fold out. So here I've unfolded the trifold, but you can see that the left side of the fold out is going to be a section that's three and three quarters of an inch wide, and then the middle section is four and a quarter of an inch wide, and the right section is five inches wide. And the section that's five inches is going to be the section that I have um, the hole punches on the very right side so that I can stick this into my Life Crafted album. So you'll see that I'm just trying to fit all of my photos on this trifold and it doesn't work. So this is where I decided that I had to have a bifold on the right side of this Life Crafted album spread. And this one I made with a piece of white cardstock measuring about seven and a quarter inches wide by eight and three eighths of an inch tall. And I'm just scoring it on the seven and a quarter inch side at five inches. So I end up with a section that's five inches and then the fold out itself is only um, two and a quarter inches wide. So with that I'll be able to fit all of my photos onto this two um, sided trifold slash bifold page um, and the three by four photo with the um, finished beers on it will kind of overhang um, the two and a quarter inch flap a bit so that um, it kind of creates a bit more dimension that way. And I forgot to mention as well that all of my small photos showing the process are about um, two inches wide by three inches tall. So I'm going to be doing a whole bunch of stamping in this video. So during those parts, I'll kind of fast forward a bit. But here I'm using the Kelly Perky Southport alphabet stamp set to stamp the title Homebrew 101 in some black ink. I'm using my Gina K Black Amalgam ink. So I bought this Southport stamp set back in Kelly Perky's old shop. This was back in 2015 when she had her old shop before Paper Person. Um, but I just checked the Paper Person website when I was doing this vo voiceover and it looks like they still have the Southport stamp set available on her shop. Um, that's the new Paper Person shop. So I'll put a link down in the description box below if you're interested in getting this. This is one of my favorite um, alphabet stamp sets. And here I'm just using one of the stamps from the Paper Person Local Brew stamp set to stamp out an icon that actually says Local Brew um, because this is a home brew and you can't get any more local than that, right? I did check on the Paper Person website and it does look like this Local Brew stamp set is no longer being sold, so um, I'm sorry if you missed out on this. I knew as soon as this hit the stores that I had to get it just because my boyfriend really loves beer. So you'll see me speed up the video a bit here just because some of these steps are a bit more repetitive, but I just wanted to show you how I put together the rest of this spread just because um, I thought it was interesting how I rearranged all of the pictures um, in kind of like a flow chart manner. So um, here you'll see that I'm using the Kelly Perky Addison alphabet stamp set. Um, this one is kind of like a lowercase of the Southport alphabet. Um, and this was released back in 2017 in Pe Kelly Perky's old shop and currently it's not available on the paper person shop, but you never know, Kelly might bring it back um, if there's enough demand. So um, 
if you are interested, maybe let her know um, to see if she would like to bring that back. So for each one of these photos, I'm just stamping out one of the words for that particular step um, in the Addison stamp set and I'm just handwriting the rest of that instruction. So for example, for gather ingredients and equipment, I just stamped the word gather and then I hand wrote ingredients plus equipment underneath that. You'll also notice that I stamped the alphabets in the cloudy night um, color as well instead of stamping it in black. And I just feel like um, the fact that I only stamped out the one word per photo and the fact that I stamped it out in a lighter color just makes the page a bit less cluttered because there are already a lot of photos and a lot of words going on. And for this spread, I'm not even taking the time to make sure that the letters are nice and evenly spaced out or that they're in a straight line, etc. Um, and all of my pictures I've glued at a bit of an angle and some of them overlapping one another. And that's just because I feel like it adds more to like the homemade aesthetic of this whole spread. And especially with some of these words going vertically instead of going horizontally, um, I just feel like it kind of creates a wonky but cute effect. And I think the font especially is a bit versatile in that you can kind of make it lined up and straight like I did with the Homebrew 101 and that looks nice, but you can kind of make it wonky and that looks nice as well in this particular font. Just finishing up the stamping for the last couple of steps here in the brewing process. And here's where I put the large uh, three by four photo um, on top of that flap so that it overhangs the flap a bit and creates a bit more interest. And before I glue that down, I decided to stamp a couple of um, the stamps from the local brew stamp set. So I stamped um, the I Love Craft Beer a couple of times on the bottom of this flip out. And there's also a stamp where you can put a check mark beside what type of beer um, you were having. So um, there's the options of ale, lager, cider, or stout. Um, and as my boyfriend tells me, a stout is actually a type of ale. So I chose not to stamp the stout on um, this flip out here and instead just had the options of ale, lager, and cider. And this was a, an ale that he had brewed. So I'll put a check mark beside the ale um, in a bit. And on the top of this photo, I just stamped again um, the I love craft beer phrase as well as pass me a pint. And just stamping the word enjoy with lots of exclamation marks um, with the Addison stamp set just because that's the most exciting final step of the homebrew process. I wanted to finish the top of this flip out here with a couple of beer glasses similar to the ones in the picture. So I decided to stamp the outline of the glasses in black ink and then to fill out the inside with the liquid um, using the Altenew Fire Brick dye ink, which matches the color of the beer pretty closely. So if you watch my stretch your stamps scrapbooking video about solid stamps that I uploaded two weeks ago, um, I had talked about the importance of priming your stamps before stamping them, especially the solid stamps. Um, however, I forgot that I hadn't primed these stamps before I used them. And so you'll see that the liquid in the glasses kind of shows up a bit blotchy. And I actually really like the effect that that gives because it kind of looks like the beer is kind of carbonated and bubbly. So um, I think I'm going to leave this stamp as um, not primed for <laughs> the duration while I'm using the stamp. Um, and it'll just have like a really nice bubbly look all the time. And this was totally a serendipitous discovery, um, but I thought it created such a fun effect. Next, I'm going to use the stamp set from Everyday Explorers called Markup. And I'm just using the arrow stamps from the stamp set to direct your eyes towards um, the different steps of the brewing process in the correct order. Um, and I feel like this really brings together this whole spread and makes it a bit more cohesive instead of just random photos and random words on there. And I am just using the Altenew Firebrick ink, um, same as the one that I had used for the beer, so that it just provides a bit more cohesive look. Also, I did try to alternate the styles of arrows that I used as well as the sizes of arrows that I used so that I could um, fill in the spaces a bit more appropriately. 
And then I did want to bring in an extra um, long arrow to link the two pages together. So um, I stamped part of the arrow on one page and then the other part of the arrow on the right side page um, just to help bridge those two pages. Next, I wanted to include this picture of the whole brewing system from the local brew stamp set onto my spread. And I thought this would go perfectly in the middle of my spread because the left vessel there is um, where the mashing occurs and um, the boiling and sparging, etc. And the right conical shape vessel there is where the fermentation happens and I thought it would be really cool if I stamped it spanning across these two pages because um, the left-sided vessel there is where all of those steps on the left side of the spread happens and the right-sided conical vessel is where um, like the fermenting and the final steps happen so um, that just worked out perfectly that those photos were um, in the corresponding sides of the spread. Now that the inside of this foldout is complete with all of the brewing steps, I'm just going to decorate the um, back of this trifold. So I have here uh, one of the planner tabs from the Coco Daisy Tranquility Kit. This was back um, in May. It was when they released this kit. And I'm just going to stamp in um, the blank spot there the phrase the brewery um, by masking off the at symbol that's above that. And it just fits perfectly into that little spot. These planner tabs are already adhesive backed. So all I have to do is peel off the tape backing and adhere that down onto the left edge of my flap there. And here I've just printed out a photo of um, we had gone to the homebrew store to pick up some supplies and I liked this photo with all of the different types of chocolate malts. Um, so I took a photo of that and printed it out for the inside of this little flap there. For the left portion here I just have some pattern paper from Coco Daisy's Tranquility collection. This was also um, from the May collection and I also have one of these oversized tags that I um, printed out some journaling on some clear sticker paper to fit into that um, and at the bottom it just says stories documented. So I'm just going to layer this tag on top of that pattern paper and that is the inside of this trifold done. Whenever I'm working with a uh, clear sticker paper, I do like to burnish it down with a burnishing tool just because I find that that really helps give it a crystal clear look instead of sometimes if you don't burnish it down, it looks a bit foggy. I did debate about adding some ribbon to the top of this tag, um, but I decided it looked nicer just plain. Um, so I am just going to glue this down on top of the pattern paper. For this little flip out here on the right side, I do have some pattern paper that I'm just going to trim down to size to cover the front of that fold out. And to cover the front of this 3x4 photo that I have, um, I'm debated about using this corally colored um, card from the Coco Daisy kit to mat my photo. This is just a photo of all of the beer books that my boyfriend has on his shelf. But I decided that I would rather have a white border around that. So I'm just going to cut out a piece of white cardstock um, down to size and just put the photo on top of that instead. To finish off this flap, I just have a couple of chipboard pieces from the Coco Daisy Memory Keeping Kit. Um, the bottom one is a circle that says yes, yes, yes. And I have a die cut piece that says all things grow with love because um, it's the yeast that's growing inside the beer. And then I have a heart chipboard piece as well. So here's a final look at my finished page. I really love how this turned out and um, just how the whole page flows in general and how when you have the booklets closed, I can still see like peaks of coral and green peeking out from behind. And so that kind of ties things together. And I like the fact that I used that fire brick red um, ink to tie in the red from the beer as well. Thanks so much for watching.